So today I'm doing a simple unboxing. Um, this is a radio control for uh, robots, cars, things like that. Little kids toys even. I found this at Finger Tech Robotics. Um, these guys here. Problem is they are out of Canada. So it costs quite a bit to ship these things to the States. Um, almost half the cost of this. This is a very cheap. Um, it looked good, but it's apparently a really cheap kind of thing. Um, they market this thing as a T6A transmitter. And when I was looking around to see what this was, because it's so generic that I'm sure a bunch of brands have rebranded it for themselves. Um, come to find out, even though it's T6A and on their website has nothing to do with where it came from, on the box itself, it says exactly, Fly Sky. So, these are rebranded under, um, I think, Hobbyco and slew of other brands, but they're all the same transmitter, they just put different stickers on it. So let's get into this thing. The box is open. There's no styrofoam, no closed cell, nothing, it's just plastic. So here we go. I haven't opened this before this video either. First time for me even pulling it out. Uh, it did say it uses eight double A's. I'm not about to power this up because I don't think I can find that many. So, regular vacuum formed, whatever. Um, here is the radio receiver. It's actually really small compared to some of the other. I have some, um, I think high tech and a couple other ones over there that I've been using here and there, but this is super small. We'll take a look at this in a second. Radio self, well, we're upside down, but what is this? Oh, look at this. It's one of those tiny CDs that you can't stick in any CD player, any computer, anything, unless you have a s actual tray that comes out. Um, slot load CD things on computers, this will not work, it'll just jam it up. So, Guess I'll see what the heck's on here. I'm guessing just the manual, like anything else these days. They give you a disc instead of a book, because this is so much cheaper than printing paper. And here's the radio itself. Sorry, it's upside down. That's my fault. It's out of here. So on the back, it says trainer. Here's the cable. Oh, maybe it's actually software on this little disc. Um, we have a USB. It's actually an S-Video cable. So USB to S-Video. And there's something going on here. Not sure what's going on there. And of course the ferrite core to uh, kind of take some of the EMF out. That comes included. It is a standard S-Video. It even has a little key. Exactly like an S-Video does. So I'm guessing you're going to program this with that. So, we're going to need this with the cable, trying to port. Something will happen there. We'll check that out in a minute. I'm just going to keep going with the radio. This is a big old keychain thing. Um, it has the same brand thing. This is where I got it from. A little keychain thing that's already pre attached to the radio. Finger Tech Robotics out of Canada. And this is your battery door. Very simple. This will probably break off if you drop this once. Just there, it's on the floor. A ton of double A's. It also has it says charge down here. It doesn't mention anything about charging. It's kind of strange. Oh, there it is on the side. There's a little charge port there. And interesting because all it says on the box is throw a bunch of double A's in it. Nothing about charging, so I wonder if these are just NICADs you would put in there. I would assume. I guess I can find out later. And flipping it over, we have a little bendy Wi-Fi antenna. 
Same thing you have on your router for your network. And there we go. So, we've got the little lasso here. Let me get this out of the way. Apparently, there's a design for uh, robotic competitions where, you know, what is it called? The battle bots or something like that, where you go and build your robot and go kill the other robot. So, that's kind of their niche. So, a few things here. This is a six channel. We have a really cheesy sticker here that kind of has gener generic kind of uh, labels here. Um, CE, that's always a good sign. <laughs> China export. Um, no other certifications other than that. So, this just means it's certified to basically leave China. This could actually set your house on fire, and who cares because it's China export. Just means it's safe enough to move without exploding. Um, we've got a little LED buried down in here. It says uh, high, mid, low. There's a green light, orange light, and a red. So I'm assuming this is for the battery consumption. Um, moving up top. Ooh, I was hoping this was spring-loaded. It's not. So this, if you were using it in a, let's say, an airplane, um, this would be your throttle, and it's got little detents. It's very nice the way it moves. It's smooth, but you definitely have the little dents, and you can feel the dents, which is nice. So if you were going to take off with your plane, or um, you could set this up with a, um, what are they called? It's not a drone, but similar to a like quadcopter or something like that. We want to throttle up and keep it throttle exactly where you want it. So, all detents are for that. I may have to convert that for what I'm going to use it for. Um, the other side should be spring loaded, so we just have the up, down, left, right. If we let it go. All plastic inside. Same thing here. Um, let's see, other than that, we have trimmers, so you can adjust. If your vehicle is tracking slightly, you can adjust it, and these all have detents also. So you can lock specifically where you want it. Then we also have the other uh, channels here. There's two switches up top. You can see there. So these would be the um, five and six channel. These would just be a simple, if you had a servo or something to turn on, you want to go to full tilt or just turn on a vice, you'd flip it and it will go full tilt or turn on the individual device. And this is all controlled again by the receiver itself. So those are there. That's it for the radio itself. I will power this on a little bit later. I'm not sure what this button is. We'll have to explore that one. There's no um, instruction manual whatsoever within this box. The only thing that came in here was this, the radio, some USB thingy, and the receiver. So I'm still assuming everything is going to be on the CD. I will find out in a minute. So now into the radio itself. Get this out of this little bag. This is not a static protection bag, it's just plastic. Some strange jumper in here. Apparently, I need to RTFM on this CD to figure out what's going on here. I like paper documentation. I like a book that I can open and see, like, well, this is supposed to go in here, and then you connect this to your computer, and then you just open up this one thing, and it does something. There's nothing in here. The only paper I had was the packing slip. There's nothing else in the box whatsoever. So here's the radio. I mean, you can see based on my hand, I, I guess I have medium hands. These aren't large, per se. But the size of this thing is just micro. And you can see this is kind of a standard servo, servo plug. And even the scale of this next to that. It's ridiculous. So we have all the six channels, like a typical um, receiver. And the very top one would be the battery. I'm not sure what the shunt is. 
whatsoever because they're obviously shorting two pins, like a positive negative type deal. Something like that. And as far as an antenna goes, this is quite interesting. We have a very short three inch antenna coming out of here. And then it goes into something that was shrink tubed. I'm not sure what's going on there. I may open that up to see what's in there. I'm guessing a coil, possibly, where just wires really thin wrapped together. Uh, this does run on 2.4 gigahertz, uh, which is basically what your Wi-Fi signal is. So this could actually receive interference from local Wi-Fi. So that could be an issue. Um, micro thing here. We've got this guy here. A lanyard. Just because. Everyone needs a lanyard. Those are fun. Uh, USB to <laughs> S-Video for programming. And then the mysterious CD. The micro CD. Or mini CD. No label. It's obviously burned because it's got that color. And even the data track in the center, I'm sure you can't see this, but they've only used a small portion, so this is probably something that could be distributed on a floppy drive. However, who has one of those anymore? It's probably about two megabytes worth of stuff on this little disk. And continuing on what's in here, so radio itself. So we got the big guy, the little guy, and all this extra crap. So we just have to figure out how it works and the one thing I do want to check out is um, what's the latency between me pressing this up and this outputting something, which I will probably test with these switches. It should be easier because it's going to be channel, let me see, well it actually doesn't tell you. So channel 5 and 6 I'm assuming are these. So we can check to see how long it takes from me flipping the switch to channel 6 saying yes. So that's something to experiment with. Um, one last thing that would be really interesting is since this is such a low end, well, the price is, hopefully it's not a totally low end radio. I mean, it weighs nothing. Once you load it with 50 batteries, I'm sure it weighs a ton. But using this little dingleberry looking antenna, I'm really curious to see how far the range is from this little pathetic thing because I have some older RC cars and their antennas are good you know 12 14 inches long and so is the one that's on the radio south that thing will extend all the way out so it looks like it gets a larger range this is like a little something you find on a cheap no-name Wi-Fi router and then you have what's left of an antenna is what it looks like so I will be testing the range and the latency and probably take you guys through whatever the heck is going on with this software so uh, solution here so I guess until the next update which I'll probably mash in with this video um, I guess let's take a break and I'll come back with you and show you what's going on with it